Today's Port Swigger tutorial is entitled JSON Web Token Authentication Bypass via Algorithm Confusion. This lab is vulnerable to algorithm confusion attacks. To solve the lab, we must access the admin panel and delete the user Carlos. As with the previous labs, we are going to be using Burp's JWT Editor extension. If you do not have the extension installed, go to Burp Extensions B App Store and search for JWT Editor. Select the extension and click Install to install it. Now, access the lab and log in with the provided credentials, Winner Peter. Back in Burp, go to Proxy, HTTP History and look for the Get My Account request. Send this request to Repeater by pressing Ctrl-R. In Repeater, go to the JSON Web Token tab and send the request to make sure you are logged in as Winner. Notice that the algorithm used to sign the token is RS-256, which is an asymmetric cryptographic algorithm. This means that it uses a key pair. One of the keys will be private and used by the server to sign the token. The other key will sometimes be public, so that anybody can verify the signature of tokens issued by the server. Servers sometimes expose their public keys as JSON Web Key objects via a standard endpoint mapped to one of the following. Let's see if the app exposes its public key. To do this, send the current request to Intruder by pressing Ctrl-I. Now go to Intruder and select the path in the request line. Press the Add button to insert the payload marker. Also make sure that the attack type is set to Sniper. Now, in the Payloads tab, add the list of endpoints we've seen earlier. I've left the list in the description below. Finally, make sure that the URL encode this characters option is not selected and click Start Attack. As you can see, one of the requests responded with a 200 OK response. We have found our public key. Now, we know that this lab is vulnerable to algorithm confusion attacks. What does this mean? In JWT libraries, the verify method often determines which algorithm to use based on the ALG parameter in the token's header. A simplified declaration of the verify method might look something like this. When the server developer assumes that the token will always be signed with an asymmetric algorithm, such as RS-256, and passes a public key to the verify method, the method will misinterpret the public key as an HMAC secret key if the ALG parameter in the token's header is HS-256. So, knowing this, the exploitation is pretty straightforward. First, we need the public key, which we found earlier. Next, we need to sign the JSON Web Token with a symmetric key. To create a new symmetric key, go to the JWT Editor tab and press the New Symmetric Key button. This key should have the HMAC secret key, represented by the key parameter, set to the modulus, the N value, of the RSA key. If we create the key and sign the JWT with it, it will not work. This is because the public key you use to sign the token must be absolutely identical to the public key stored on the server. This includes using the same format and preserving any non-printing characters like new lines. In practice, you will need to experiment with different formatting, such as the PEM format, DER format, or JWK format, in order for this attack to work. For the purposes of this lab, we know that the server stores its public key as an X509 PEM file. To get the key as PEM, we will need to copy the whole key Go back to the JWT editor, click the new RSA key button, and select PEM in the format section of the window that pops up. Copy the PEM key and go to decoder to base64 encode it. Paste the key here. Also make sure to append an extra new line character at the end. Again, in the real world, you would need to test different non-printing characters, white spaces, and edge cases to make sure your key is identical to the public key stored on the server. These include differences in white spaces, such as extra spaces or tabs within the key, new line characters that may be present at the beginning or the end of the key, different encoding schemes, such as Base64 or Base64 URL, encoding padding, such as the equals padding character at the end of the encoded string for Base64 encoding, variations in character case, such as uppercase versus lowercase letters within the key, line breaks or line length restrictions, Differences in character encoding schemes such as UTF-8 or ASCII, special characters or escape sequences such as 
the double quote in JSON strings, which may need to be properly escaped or handled to avoid parsing errors or data corruption. Additional metadata or comments such as PEM headers or footers that should be preserved or removed as needed. Now select Encode as Base64. Copy the resulting string and go back to the JWT Editor tab. Let's create a new symmetric key, but this time set the HMAC secret key to our Base64 encoded PEM key. Click OK. The new key has been saved. Finally, let's sign the token with our new symmetric key. For this, go back to Repeater and click the Sign button at the bottom of the screen. Select your newly generated key, make sure that the algorithm is set to HS256 and also select Update Generate Algorithm Parameter from the Header Options section. This will, like the name says, set the algorithm parameter to HS256. After sending the request, you should still be logged in as winner, which means that the server has accepted the signature. All that's left to do now is to try logging in as the administrator. Change the value of the subject to administrator and resign the JSON web token. Also go back to the row tab and change the value of the ID parameter to administrator. Send the request. We are logged in as the administrator and now have access to the admin panel. Change the request line to get admin to navigate to the admin panel. We see a link to delete the user Carlos. Go to the delete username Carlos page by adding the path to the request line. We get a 302 found response. If we go back to the admin page, we can see the message user deleted successfully. Also observe that the delete username Carlos path is no more. Back in the browser, we also see that the lab has been solved. This is it for today's tutorial. See you in the next one. Bye!